Welcome to the Bambanani series. Every child has a right to quality education and teaching inclusively can contribute to achieving that goal. This series of videos illustrates how teachers are teaching inclusively in South African classrooms. The videos focus on teaching numeracy and literacy in the foundation and intermediate phases. To support participation and learning by all learners, the teachers in the clips differentiate their teaching methodologies, content and assessment strategies, and classroom environment. Let's join hands to teach every child. My name is Mrs. Fisher. I'm a Grade 4 English teacher at Isle Griffith Primary School. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Miss Fisher. Okay, so we have a very, very exciting lesson planned today. But before we start with that lesson, I'd like you to close your eyes. So I started off the lesson with an icebreaker. My icebreaker was the learners using their imagination. So they closed their eyes, I asked them to close their eyes and imagine a world without sun. Imagine a world where there is no sun. So as you're imagining this, I just want you to compare it with your day to day. What are you missing out? Can you imagine such a world? I'm going to go to one or two of you and ask you what's happening in your mind with no sun. Chloe, I'd like you to tell us what do you see? It's very dark and depressing. Yes, Ululana. In my world, there's no school today. Okay, boys and girls, so open your eyes. Isn't that much better? Yes. Hey? Okay. The first thing that Miss Fisher did was she really got the learners to use their imaginations. So she asked them to close their eyes and imagine a world where there was no sun. This really supported the learners as they were able to use their imaginations and they, they really got into the lesson and, and this gave them a grounding for the lesson. I then introduced them to the lesson. I introduced them to the name of the comprehension, which is called Stealing the Sun. Can you believe that someone stole the sun? Can you believe that? No. Hey? So that's exactly where, where we're going today. We're in the village near Lake Tumba, and we are going to explore this village, and we're going to try to help them. I introduced the learners to the characters in part one just to make them feel comfortable and more at ease. So when, I, when you introduce them to the characters, they familiarize themselves. So I went around the classroom showing them a picture of the characters so that they could also imagine what the characters would look like, just to give them an idea. Today, we are going to do part one. I'm going to introduce you to the characters, the plot, the setting. We're going to be introduced to the story, to, then tomorrow we will go to, to part two. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so the first character is Chief Waii. Let me go around to introduce you to Chief Waii. Okay, that is the first character in the story. Okay, boys and girls, I'm going to introduce you to the animal characters in the story, okay? In part one. The first one is the wasp and the second animal is the tortoise. So the kite, boys and girls, I'm not talking about the kite that you use on kite day. This kite can fly on their own. A kite is also known as a bird. bird. After I introduced the characters, I explained what it is that they needed to, to do. Before that I did that, I also gave them a, a setting of the story. So we had drums and we had animals, just to make give them the setting as if they are in this village and as if they are going to assist the chief to get back the sun. So as a group, you're going to help one another and you're going to answer the questions in your yes. book. Okay? Once you're done with that, as a group, you are going to further discuss the story and you're going to think about what happens next in part two. 
Chief Y lived near Lake Tumba with his wives and many servants. He had a tall, handsome young son named Mukane. At the time, there was no sun, only dark, overcast skies all day. One day, Mukane asked his father, why doesn't the sun shine here? Chief Y looked sad. It was stolen away a very long time ago. I'll go and get the sun back for you, said Mukale. What was the name of Chief Y's son? Chief Y's son's name was... He had a tall, handsome young son named Kulu. Ms. Fisher really provided a lot of different resources for her learners. So in her box, she had the actual comprehension, which was just a page with the story and some of the comprehension questions. But she also had created wonderful story cards, which was a simplified version of the story with big pictures. So learners who needed a little bit more support were able to look at these pictures and read the story. What she also had was cards with definitions. So if there were any words that learners were a little bit unsure about, they could look at these definition cards and look at a picture and understand what these words meant. At the end of the lesson I wrapped up, I asked one or two groups what they discussed, they gave me the answers and I then gave them their homework. Their homework options were either to go home and continue reading or they could, as an individual, write up what they think happens next. So that also creates that excitement for, for the following day. Ishani, can you please report back to us? You don't have to stand. They travel to the other chief and when they get there, the chief doesn't want, the ha want to hand the son over. When they get there, they're going to have to battle the, the king to get the son back. Go home and think about what you think will happen next, okay? So that will be your homework for today. Learners had to report back to the teacher on what they thought might happen next in the story. And this is a great way of stimulating um, original thought and creativity by the learners. And she then went on to give homework um, uh, pertaining to what happens next in the story. The differentiated homework is to assist all types of learners on all different levels so they will have the one one group of learners can go home and reread the story so that they can come the next day and be on the same level as the other learners so if they missed any story elements they don't have to feel bad because they still have time to to catch up miss fisher also circulated around the class quite a lot during the time when the learners were reading the story. So this really helped to support weaker learners. She was able to give weaker learners individualized attention. And she also encouraged some of the stronger learners to, to go deeper into the questions.